What's going on YouTube? Welcome to Ice Dove Gaming and today we're going to be talking about my top 5 most overrated smite gods. Before we get into the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you'd like to keep up with any future content. I'll be leaving the link to my Twitch and to my Discord in the description below. Now, I'm only going I'm going to be going over over uh over each class. Um one for each class, assassin, hunter, guardian, mages. And again, these are gonna be my personal opinions. Um, by no means are these characters actually bad, but I feel like people overhype them to the point to where they feel like they're top tier or they're broken, and that's just not the case. So, first things first, let's go over to our assassins. Now, for me, the most overrated assassin right now is Ratatosker. Now, Ratatosker recently saw a, but well, not recently, but he recently saw a rework that made it to where he could build crit. He has more damaging abilities. He can even be a support or a solo laner. You know, his acorn lets him be a lot more diverse in how you play him. And for the most part, it did make him really strong, especially as a jungler. His crit build is honestly his best go-to build for damage. Um, and while I think the character is overrated, let me go ahead and go over the things that this character does have going for him. For one, he does have a stun. Um, he can build crit, and his one can crit off of that. And then his ult is good for not only retreating, but it's also good for engaging as well, especially since it has a knockup, making it easier to combo in three. Now, the reason why I think this character is overrated is because, starting with the first reason, his stun is very finicky. Um, if you don't know, you have to hit the enemy god with all three acorns, but they branch outward. So you would have to hit them um, at the closest range possible to guarantee the stun. And even then, if the, if the enemy person is moving, um, hitting the stun can be very frustrating. Unless you want to go dash into stun, but then you lose your um, you lose your escape outside of your ult. Um, and the three requires a lot of aim. And it requires a lot of positioning. It requires you to not be a potato to hit it. Um, also, I think his flurry is a waste of a skill slot. Um, now... It's great if you are playing as a support rat. If you support rat or Tosker, then it's different because then you can reduce somebody's protections twice, essentially. But as a jungler, it really does nothing for him because if you're building crit, you don't really need to worry about reducing the physical protection of the person you're running at because most of the time you're probably going to be running at the squishy anyway, and the squishy's not going to really be building a lot of protections against you. Um, so it's kind of useless, especially as an if you hit the combo correctly, you should essentially one-shot anybody with the crit build. So, and then on top of that, even though I agree that the ult is good for engaging and disengaging, there are just better people who can play the jungle role or have better ultimates that can be that can be used for engaging or disengaging or helping your team or essentially just kind of um, bettering bettering the team fights. Right, a knockup is great, but at the end of the day, he's not Sukuyomi. His ult can hit multiple people and he does belligerent amount of damage with a storm and a stun. He's not Nemesis who can reflect somebody's damage back at them unless they have some form of hard CC. He's not Bakasura who can instantly kill you and has a cripple on his ult with true damage. He's not the new and improved Loki. Now, I think that that matchup is kind of 5-5 depending on who gets the first hit. But um, Loki has this 20% uh, damage dealt reduction. So, um, a lot of the other assassins have something that goes better. Uh, get it, um, has, goes better for the team fighting situations. However, no one can argue that Ratatoskr can't insta kill. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the warriors. Now, the warriors took a lot of thought. I think the most overrated solo laner or the war out of the warriors is Amaterasu. Now, this is going to be a little weird for me because I do agree that Amaterasu is a top 5 solo laner. There's not a lot of people who can fight her and she has a lot going for her in the team fight situation. However, um, my thing is, there's a few things with her that I feel are lacking. At, at least when the 5v5 or the 3v3 start coming. For one, her silence can only really affect one person. Um... Yes, it's cool to have a silence on a warrior and it helps her just engage, but at the end of the day, it's only one person silence and it's hard countered by um, cripples. And then, yes, her Heavenly Reflection can do a lot of damage and does give a pretty decent amount of damage. Sorry. 
a pretty decent amount of damage mitigations. But at the end of the day, other characters can run something that's better than that. And plus, that doesn't stop her from getting CC'd to death, even if you do build full tank with the Spirit Rose and Oni Hunter's Carp. Um, I don't think... Um, it's really only there for damage, and it's very selfish. Uh, a really selfish item, so she has a lot of survivability, but she can't really do anything with the team fights outside. Up next, we have her um, Divine Presence. Now, this ability is actually very strong. Um, it's amazing as, and from a solo laner standpoint because um, it heals. It's on a relatively low cooldown at 9 seconds without CDR. And But the thing about that is, it's counter, it, again, it's hard countered by anti heal. And then it's again a heart, and then it's very selfish in nature. It only affects her. The only thing she has going for her is in the team fight situations is the ultimate, which honestly it is on a low cooldown. It's on a very low cooldown, matter of fact, because it's on a seventy-five second cooldown without CDR. So it's essentially on like a thirty to forty second cooldown with max CDR. And with this character, you're probably going to be hitting that anyway if you build like a pre win or breastplate of valor or anything along those lines with some kind of. So the ultimate is really strong, however. It's the, her only team fighting ability. And the reason why I say she's overrated is because you have characters like Wan Yu running around who can essentially do the same thing she does. She has a stun, stunning ultimate, which does significantly more damage, albeit it's on a lower cooldown. It's on a longer cooldown. He has a protection shred in his third ability, which does a significant amount of damage because it does 60 damage per hit while also stealing protections um, at a max of 30 protections while, while giving him the boosted protections. Right? He has a 60% slow, which does 300 damage. 300 damage plus 60% of your physical power, which is on a relatively low cooldown on only 12 seconds of the yard. And then he has this heal. And if you pair this with like, what's that one card? Um, Caduceus Shield. This healing gets pretty, pretty large, especially if you have the um, Painless buff going for it which increases the healing by 1.7 times the normal amount of healing. And even though people are probably going to be like, well, the healing is hard counted by uh, anti-heal as well, the thing that people don't really know about this character is that if he heals an ally, an ally god, it reduces all his cooldowns, all of them, by two seconds. So he can throw out all these abilities, heal a teammate, and then throw these abilities almost immediately after. Again. So... He has a lot more burst potential than Amaterasu does. He has a really strong ultimate. He can reduce the cooldowns of his teammates while also giving, um, while also doubling as a healer. So he has a lot going for him. He also have characters like Sun Kong running around. You have Achilles with an execute and a stun with just as much survivability and a lot more flexibility. You have Nike running around. You have Horus running around. You know, and then Kakalin can do the same thing with the HP 5 as she does while also having 8 abilities. So I feel though, as though even though Amaterasu is a really strong solo laner, when them team fights start happening, she kind of falls off and um, I feel like people are overhyping the character. Um, up next, we're going to go over the Guardians. Um, to me, this is kind of an easy pick. It's Jormungandr. Reason being is because all this character has is damage. Um, yes, he has a slow, he has his little tremble and a knock-up, but outside of that, he doesn't really have any real CC. His ultimate is extremely selfish. Yeah, he can save himself a lot, but what's he going to do for his teammates? Um, his passive, even though it's a really annoying passive to deal with and it helps him counterpick a lot of people, he, instead of getting moved, he just takes more damage, which is a double-edged sword. Yeah, you're not going to get... Um, tear pull uh, or tear pushed a lot. You're not gonna get Hercules pushed a lot. You're not gonna get Ares pulled. You're not gonna get Dodgy pulled. But you're gonna take more damage, and you and you still have to eat the stun that's attached to those abilities. So I feel as though Yormungandr, um, while being an amazing solo laner, he still lacks what he still lacks what a lot of these other guardians have, and that's team fight. That's um team fight capability. And last but not least, we're going to talk about mages. Um, all the mages, in my opinion, are very strong. All of them. There's, yeah, Aphrodite, um, Apwash, and Agni are kind of um, lower on the totem pole. But if you know what you're doing, they can still be really oppressive. So it's really hard for me to figure out who is the most overrated mage. And for me, 
um, after lifting him, though, without a question in my mind, it's Persephone. Um, against newer players, Persephone can be very um, daunting to deal with. She has this ultimate that's on a 90-second, was it, 90-second cooldown? Yeah, so if you build max CDR, so it's like 50, 60 seconds, that can be really uh, daunting, especially since it's really good in the team fights. Um, dealing with her harvest ability can be really daunting for newer players if you don't know how to dodge. And then she has really good clear with her one, and then this Kokolin type leap that just um, complements her kit very well. And then the fact that she can bring herself back to life, albeit she has 40% reduced damage, but she can come back to life and then ult somebody, making it to where she can still be a threat even when she's dead. Um, problem with this character, with at least in my opinion, is that she is so focused on her ult and the passive that it kind of defeats the character. She's, in my opinion, she's not that strong outside of lanes um, because she still has to have this setup going for her. And she can't have, um, she can't have more than what ten skulls at max rank on the field at any given time. So she has to know where to place her plants and where to put them during team fights or laning phase. She has to um, play around these a lot. And then a thing that I noticed with this character. So what I like to do is that I like to send an ability out and then adjust the ability's casting. While I'm um, while I'm casting it, so I can adjust to somebody's juke. With this ability, you can't do that. So the second you send it out, you have to fully commit to it, and that's kind of a detriment to her because now she's aim dependent. And then, yes, I mentioned that her uh, passive is really strong because she can team fight after she's dead, but she only does forty percent of her overall damage. So the only, if she doesn't have her ult, she's useless. And that kind of makes it to where, well, do I want to use my ult now or do I want to wait until I die to use it? Um, and that puts her in a really awkward situation, especially if they have team members who constantly dive to Persephone before a team fight even happens. So she's heavily reliant on positioning and she can be very difficult to play, which makes it to where not only so not only is she hard to play, um, her only team fight ability is her ultimate. Her line move is really weird to aim, and then her Cullen type leap is really hard counted again by cripples, and it doesn't give her a lot of distance. So, this character, while being very strong, is a tad bit underwhelming, especially if like, you want somebody with teamfight capabilities to play Hades. You know, he's easier to play, he has life steal bit to his kit, he has a team fighting ultimate, which again, still burns beads. Um... You have characters like Oleron, burns beads, but has really hard-hitting abilities. He can clear, he's easy to use. You have somebody like Kulkin, again, really strong, hard-hitting ult, slow. Uh, turn, um, his damage is always up. You know, there's just characters that you could play over Persephone, even though Persephone is really strong. Why would you suffer, why would you put yourself through that when you can play somebody easier and still have the same effect and same, um... Win, uh, win ratio, or even a better win ratio than a hard character to play. Um, but that's going to be my top five most overrated characters in Smite. If you disagree with me, or if you'd like to add on to this list, or if you would like to um, discuss anybody who you feel is just as overrated, um, don't forget to comment in the comment section below. Again, don't forget to check out my Twitch and my Discord. I'll be leaving those in the description below. And without further ado, I'll see y'all 